Saturday morning and welcome to another edition of the award-winning Outdoors with Larry Ray, brought to you proudly by the Tennessee Wildlife Resources Agency. Now, here's your host, Larry Ray. Hey, good Saturday morning. Welcome to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790 right here in Memphis, Tennessee and 92.9 HD FM. Of course, all you good folks in Brownsville on 1520 AM, 95.3 FM, and of course, News Talk 101.5. In Jackson, on this October the 16th, 2021, and we have the man himself in the studio. I don't know if he's uh, really recovered from uh, 5,262.3 miles, but I guarantee you Frank Barton will say it was all worth it. Right, Frank? I sure will. Good morning, everybody. (laughs) The Master Nationals is over. And Frank comes home a winner, and really, uh, congratulations to you. I mean, thank uh, you. It was uh, uh, a a lot of fun, uh, a lot of a lot of effort, a lot of you know, just getting <laughs> getting there. And, in Idaho, uh, all, yeah, in Idaho, in Idaho, yeah, this wasn't uh, a wonderful place, a beautiful place, and we're gonna we're gonna talk to Frank. Uh, in the show's last segment to go over about this because uh, you did you did bring back something, didn't you, Frank? Oh, we, we were successful, yeah. We? You, you said we? We, yeah. Who's, yeah. who's Go- the we Go- part? Goose and I. There you go. All right, we got to get Goose in there because uh, we're going to talk about Goose, talk about Frank, and, uh, of course, his longtime association with the Master Nationals receiver, and he's got the big book there and everything like that, and, uh, so excited for Frank um, and Goose to do that. But, uh, Frank, glad to have you on board. We're going to talk today later on with uh, Dustin Horton. He is the new Tennessee Scholastic 3D Archery uh, co- Conservation Outreach Coordinator. Then listen up, you waterfowl hunters, because we're going to zero in on you today with Dr. Bill Dickinson. He's the CEO and founder of Tetra Hearing in uh, Nolensville, Tennessee, and he's got some really interesting facts. Uh, you know, uh, my uncle was in World War II at Utah Beach, and none of those guys were wearing hair protection. You know, she, you watch all these movies, they're not wearing hair protection, Frank. I mean, they we don't think about it, but he says one out of nine waterfowl hunters do not use hearing protection. I'm only, I'm, excuse me, only one out of nine use hearing protection. Now, What's your response to that? I'm, huh? I'm I'm one of the ones. You're one of the ones, and I am too. And I mean, uh, and and but uh, we're, he's very interesting. And uh, of course, Tetra is a a leading force in uh, hearing uh, for well, the outdoors, whatever you might be doing. But we're going to talk to uh, Dr. Dickinson, and then. Uh, get a little mid south fishing report from David Best of uh, Primary Tackle. And then, uh, hey, we got uh, another Bethel University uh, fishing uh, young man won a, a berth in the 2022 Bassmaster Classic, and that's Tristan McCormick. And we're going to talk to Tristan. He's out of Dixon, Tennessee, and he becomes the third Bethel University 
bass angler to win an opportunity to uh, compete in the Classic. We're going to talk to him and his coach, Gary Mason. And then as we close it out, as I said, me and Frank will kind of reminisce about the, the trip to Idaho, what went on, and a little bit from Frank's heart about uh, what this means for him. And I know his longtime association uh, with the organization, but I uh, uh, want to pass along a, a few notes today before we jump into it with Frank and, uh, and really uh, the, the, the bulk of today's show. That's if my 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 throat will help me. Yes, I do. I've, I've had the epizooty, as I call it, but I'm on the way back. It's that fall time. But uh, I want to pass out condolences uh, to the Reynolds family. That's right, uh, Jean Reynolds, uh, the wife of a longtime legendary outdoor writer, uh, Henry Reynolds, uh, who was the outdoor editor of Commercial Appeal for over 40 years before uh, somehow I became his successor in 1988. Well, his wife, Jean, well in her 90s, living in the Dakotas with, uh, uh, in a, assisted li- a nursing home near her daughter, uh, Jean Ann Reynolds Anderson. Well, Miss Jean Reynolds uh, passed away early Thursday morning. Don't know any details or anything about that, but I know a lot of you folks out there. I know Frank's heard that name, uh, Henry Reynolds, I mean, he and Sterling Briggs. I mean, they 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 hunted all the time, right? Henry was a regular visitor at uh, at Sterling's. He was, mm-hmm. he was, and uh, with with his camera, with his Browning camera, and everything. But uh, and they were a fixture at fishing rodeos. I mean, you know, they were they were the driving force behind the Mid South Junior Fishing Rodeo that. Uh, once upon a time, had as many as fifteen hundred kids fishing over three days. I, you know, I, I've seen it, so I know it happens. But to see that many kids fishing in uh, <laughs> in a tournament uh, was really great. So anyway, and then there's some news from the TWRA, uh, and this is really uh, pretty cool, folks. Uh, the Tennessee Fish and Wildlife Commission is going to be meeting. In West Tennessee on October the 21st and the 22nd, they're going to be at that wonderful facility called Lone Oaks Farm in Hardeman County. And it's an opportunity for us to go see in person uh, the operation of the T- of the TFWC uh, October the 21st. That's a Thursday at 1 p.m. and the second day at 9 a.m. on October 22nd. And they're going to uh, the sport fish proposal will be previewed by them. Excuse me, they previewed them in August, and now they're ready to roll with them. So uh, here's your chance to see the TWRA organization. Of course, it'll be online and everything. But then this latest news really really was something when I read this. And, Frank, I don't know if you've heard about this or not, but two hunters from Mississippi lost their hunting equipment, hunting privileges, and were ordered to pay $10,000. Four hundred and fifty dollars in fees from taking an illegal eleven-point white-tailed deer in penalties issued by a federal judge in Memphis. I did know about it. Yeah, yeah. I read about it when I was on my trip. Well, some people think they didn't get enough, but uh, you know, to do what they did, uh, the first defendant was ordered to pay ninety-two hundred dollars and forfeit a twenty-two caliber rifle with a scope. And a one-year federal probation, including no hunting worldwide. So uh, this all happened in the northern Mississippi United States. Magistrate judge accepted that. So uh, a lot of topics on the internet about those uh, two individuals and uh, what they did. And uh, you know, if they wanted to do that, they could go to Texas and spend the same amount of money and not have to worry about anything that goes along with it. But, uh, you know, it's a time now, Frank. Uh, fall is uh, starting this morning, really. we got some cool weather coming in. So, uh, you know, uh, I, I will ask you before we get back to the other things is what's it been like, the reception? you got a lot of f- friends and everything have uh, congratulated you. and uh, Oh, yeah. That was uh, uh, when I put the post on Facebook on on Saturday, I uh-huh. uh, 
I knew I'd get uh, a lot of response because there's a lot of people in the Master National uh, and the Retriever community know what I've know what I've done with Master National for the last 18 years, and so uh, 18 was, years, yeah. Okay. So it was uh, uh, it was it was real nice to read what people had to say. Yeah, yeah. and it's going to be even nicer as you just keep going. Now you're <laughs> in the spotlight. <laughs> well, now you're you're you know you're a target now. No, 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 no. no. Just, that's and that's the good thing about the the uh, hunt test game in that um, y- y- everybody's just cheering for the dogs um, to do well. They, yes, you're, yeah, and it doesn't make any difference. There, you know, there's no ranking, there's no placement, no, no. They just got to complete no, the no, test. No blue ribbon or anything yeah. like that. You just. You pass the test or you don't pass the test. So everybody at the hunt test game, um, you're you're always cheering for the dog. Okay. Um, and so no matter what, and that's that's the good thing. <laughs> that is the good thing. And of course, uh, goose. Uh, we'll talk more about goose uh, because of Frank's love for dogs. But uh, he was a good boy. He was a good boy. Was, goose was a good boy. Yeah. Well, uh, judging by the picture, I think. Uh, I thought you would bring, you know, bring a goose with you this morning, or maybe a picture that goose could autograph, you know, put put his paw print on it. You may have to do that, Frank, and uh, post something like that, uh, or maybe just take a snapshot of goose every day for the next year and, and just. Uh, I took plenty of pictures. Of I him. think you did, <laughs> didn't you? Yeah. Uh, during the during that time, I t- he got plenty of pictures in the last four or five days. Well, we're going to talk to Frank Moore as we go along, and particularly stick around for the end, because I know this means so much to Frank and uh, and his family and everything else. And uh, the journey there and journey back, we'll talk to Frank about that. It's not easy to get to Idaho. Uh, well, I'm just so glad he's got a new truck, and he looks so cool driving it now too. <laughs> All right, let's take our first break of the morning. We're going to come back and talk a little scholastic play target. We're going to talk about archery. Where am I? We'll be right back. Hey, 